so glad you didn't have your Zoom outfit on there. <laughs> Whenever people stand up from their desk, it's always a crapshoot whether or not they're wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Hello, welcome everybody. This evening we have Brent here from uh, Xcare. He's going to be talking about um, other options for our Teslas for uh, extended warranties. So I'll hand it over to Brent. So thank you all for being here. And I'm going to put my. If you're not talking, can you please put your uh, device on mute. That way, if uh, we don't get any background noise. But when, when you want to ask a questions, please come off of mute and, and uh, speak at that point. Thank right, you. Well, first. First off, I'd like to thank Michael for uh, for setting this up. Um, it, very, very cool of him to, uh, to to just increase the awareness of our community to Xcare. So thank you very much, Michael. Uh, joining me today as well is uh, is KJ Gimbel and Milad Davuti. Uh, KJ is the managing partner of our parent company, Accelerate Auto, uh, which has been around since uh, 2014. Uh, business partner with Tesla for personal and business leasing, uh, as well as Xcare. And Milad Davuti is with us as well. And Milad uh, actually uh, was the uh, was the major mover behind the development of Xcare as a, as a warranty product for uh, for Teslas, and now expanded to to all EVs. So. To give you a little background on myself, my name is Brent Seavey. I was uh, a 20 plus year automotive veteran, uh, most recently with uh, Tesla uh, from 2015 to late 2019. Uh, actually helped to start the uh, used car department uh, with Milad and about five other people in Highland Park, Illinois in a garage. Um, so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, worked on turning that into a monster and uh, and then uh, left Tesla in late 2019, took a COVID vacation for about six months, worked on my house, worked on my yard, and reconnected with my friends Milad and KJ to uh, to build Xcare uh, into uh, into the brand it is today. Um, basically, from from my, I'll give kind of a little piece of my perspective, and then I'll hand things off to uh, to KJ and Milad uh, for their intros. Uh, when I was working at Tesla in the used car department, one of the things that used to really um, bother me was people would call in and they'd say, well, I'm not looking to buy a Tesla from Tesla. I'm looking to buy my sister or my cousins or my brother's Model S, um, but I'd like to get a warranty. Can I get a warranty from you guys? Uh, no. Well, if I get it inspected, can I buy a warranty from Tesla? Well, no. So there were a growing number of cars out there that people were selling to family, friends, private market trading in at other dealerships that didn't really have any option for extending their warranty. And so that used to always really bother me. And and when I uh, when I bought my own Tesla and and Milad and I caught up a few years back and and he was developing X care with uh, with KJ and and I, I, I basically vented to him that you know there was no real product out there for a lot of people in our community that weren't first owners or their warranties had already gone past 50 you know their cars had gone past 50,000 miles so there was a big part of our community that was underserved and then later on model 3 and then subsequently model Y came out mm -hmm. and there is no extended warranty from Tesla at all for those cars uh, for so now there was an exponential growth within Tesla of, of new brand new people in our community that just had no viable option at all. So when I was speaking with Malad a couple of years back, while well, they were they had released Xcare and they were they were further developing it, and and he brought to my attention that Xcare uh, existed. It was it was just eye opening that people could actually get a world class warranty for their <coughs> Tesla for the first time ever. And on that note, I will hand off to Malad for his intro and his, uh, and his basic piece of history. Thanks, Brent. Hey, everybody. Um, so yeah, my name is Milad Davuti. I, uh, uh, I actually worked with Tesla from 2011 to 2018, so about seven years. Um, I actually started Tesla Texas. I was the very first person to be hired in, in, uh, in Texas to start the entire market. I helped open the Houston Galleria location back in October of 2011. Um, and if any of you are first Model S owners from the signature days back when we started delivery in 2012, 
uh, I probably helped you out uh, during Get Amped, the first test drive in Houston, Austin, or Dallas. And, uh, and then in 2014, we actually I went to, uh, uh, as Brent mentioned, moved over to Chicago, actually kickstart the what will be or what would ha- would be later on in the future, the entire trade in use use vehicle um, use vehicle department, as I like to call it, program team, uh, global organization, global operation, um, and expanded that to all of our markets uh, across um, across EMEA and and APAC and new markets as we as we were growing quite significantly. So when I left in 2018, it was very apparent. One, we created something that was uh, that was very interesting. We created. Uh, an entire used vehicle EV market. So that really didn't have a whole lot of traction, didn't really exist. Um, you know, the Leafs were around for a little bit, but uh, overall it was Teslas that were really making that, uh, make, making a lot of that traction. And, and it, about a few months after I left, the amount of used vehicles, EVs that were on the, uh, that were available for sale in the private market went from about a couple hundred to about a couple thousand, almost overnight. And this was only just the beginning, uh, as Model Three was just kind of slowly ramping out, and we were we were still kind of getting our uh, getting our wheels going as far as uh, for scalability. So this was actually pretty interesting to see. And one of the things that I did when I was at Tesla is I created the used vehicle warranty. <laughs> so I created the warranty to pack onto our used cars to make them different, right? How do we set ourselves apart from everybody else out in the world? What makes us different than just every, any random dealer? Are we just going to literally use our name? We're Tesla? Or are we actually going to do something different? Are we going to offer something different? And that was when I, I went out of my way to actually create the used vehicle warranty. And when I left, I realized no one else was trying. No one else was doing anything about it. Um, I, I really understood kind of the, the nuances of why Tesla wouldn't pack on an extended warranty for a lot of different reasons on the used vehicles. And there's a lot of limitations on what we could or couldn't do. And in the independent market, no one was even, no one cared. Uh, this industry was very old school. It was very legacy. Um, and and most, from a lot of scenarios, have really bad rep and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of bad stigma. And uh, for me, it was, well, we know this works. We know this will set us apart from everybody else. We know it set anybody apart from anybody else and really just give an option to people, right? There were so many used car customers that were buying used vehicles from Tesla remarketing, and they couldn't get an extended warranty. We wouldn't help them. We would literally say no when they asked. And that's not in our blood, right? If you're an old school Tesla employee, you just can't say no. You got to figure out how to say yes. If you don't know how, you got to figure out the answer. Um, so when I left, it really took that uh, took that to heart. It was like, okay, we got to create something, but not just create what everyone else probably already has for any other car. We got to do something different, right? A lot of people don't like uh, extended warranties because one, it's just a way for dealers to make money. What if we flipped the script on that? What if we did everything differently? What if we took all the reasons why these things were bad, and turned them around and said, we actually do. This is one of the reasons why we're amazing. What if we were an insurance product that cared less about the sale and more about the claims? What if we cared more about the experience of when something goes wrong than about you just having that peace of mind? And this was an entirely new way of thinking. Obviously, this made a lot of people uncomfortable in the insurance world <laughs> because that's not what they like to hear. <laughs> but we didn't care, right? It was our job to get them to say yes. It was our job to make everyone else understand why we were doing what we were doing. And that's the birth of it. And that was almost three years ago now, a little under, about two and a half. And it's growing immensely. And the whole purpose of it is we know no, it was, it was ine- inevitable. There will be more used vehicles out in circulation than there will be in the hands of Tesla remarketing. Guaranteed. There's no way around it. And as time goes by, as manufacturing increases, there will continuously be more. There's a waterfall effect. We need, and if we want, if we cared about the success of Tesla, or if we just cared about the success of EVs in general, we had to empower and create a value add to the circulation of the assets that were going to be there one way or the other. And if someone else wasn't going to do it, then we needed to do it. So that's what we that, and that's what we did. And we're still continuously driving this. And every quarter, there are now tens of thousands of new Teslas that are coming out of warranty within a four uh, that age four years old. And it's going to be it's and it's waterfalling every single quarter. So. We focused the first two years on brand equity, getting people to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Why do we create this product for everybody? What are we what are we doing here and who are we? Right. We're not some company that makes a bunch of warranties for other cars. We've never done this before. This is specifically for for this, for this segment, for this community. And then how do we 
figure out what works and versus what doesn't, and let's manipulate it and throw more stuff at the wall and, and just continue building and building and building and helping more people and get more butts and seats. So I think we've done a pretty good job, and uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let KJ give an, uh, give an opening here. Sure. Thanks, Milan. Uh, I'm KJ Gimbel. I'm a founder and managing partner at Accelerate. Uh, 25 years of my 42 years I've spent in the auto industry, whether in finance or in fleet management or in fleet sales. i uh, come from a, a, a couple of different backgrounds. Uh, my dad owned a finance company and a dealership at one point. And then on the other side, my mom was in Silicon Valley and technology side. So grew up in Northern California in the uh, Bay Area. So I was a fan of technology. Uh, from a young age, but had one foot in in legacy auto and one foot in 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 software and tech. So as uh, when I moved here in ninety five, ninety six, I started working for Chrysler. Um, moved into financing it uh, from I think when I, by the time I was twenty three, I was in uh, starting out in commercial finance. Uh, got around my first Tesla in twenty twelve, and uh, actually leased the first Tesla ever in Texas. Um, through that spurred a relationship with some of the original salespeople like Milad and, and others at Tesla, where we started uh, venturing out and figuring out how to, how to create products and services that would enable uh, Tesla to, to drive uh, more sales and get more people to convert to EV because from a passion side of it, we were, uh, we're st and still to this day, it's like the main reason we're here. So, uh, you know, really the goal was to, and I, I, I say it all the time and I'll, t I'll say it again. It's like my one thing that I go to is like we, we are like a pilot fish swimming next to a shark. Uh, you know, we have this symbiotic relationship with Tesla um, that is that, you know, we're we're there to 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 be the things that they're either uh, not because they're focusing on production or they're the or the community is looking for uh, for things and and have nowhere to turn. So if we have the ability to create those products or services, that's what that's what our goal is. Um, so I'm on my personally, I'm on my seventh Tesla as an owner. Um, my wife drives a Model X. I drive a Model Three. Uh, my first my first Tesla was a, a 2013 P85 Plus that I bought from uh, Ben Canner uh, at a, during a drive event here in Dallas that we were hosting. Uh, it was. My one of my favorite cars ever. I'm still it's like the one that got away. Uh, but you know, I think that the the really the goal behind all this for us was to was to you know create something that that wasn't there. For one, we were concerned about our lease returns. You know, we've leased thousands of, of Teslas at, out in the market, and we're concerned about what those the valuation of those cars was going to be like in you know three four years. Uh, you know, obviously. Not a whole lot of people want to drop fifty thousand dollars on a car that doesn't have a warranty. So, uh, just for our own, uh, just for our own purpose, we were trying to figure out how to how to create a solution that would allow people to not only get into a Tesla at a lower price point, but to do that without having a whole lot of exposure. Uh, obviously, we know that the cars go quite a bit longer than internal combustion engine cars. Uh, they're far less things to to break. Uh, but as I figured out as not only an, uh, an early adopter, uh, but through other, you know, you know, through multiple iterations of vehicles that I own, there are things that go wrong. You know, door handles, uh, your, your, your air suspension, your, your, your ECM, MCU, everything that we know are the usual suspects that have gone wrong on Teslas. You know, if you're out of warranty, those things come as a big shocker. And, and from a service side, it used to be those were, Items that they would either, you know, take care of through loyalty or, or through uh, through some through some type of um, uh, what was what was the the terminology back in the day? Goodwill account, you know, <laughs> yeah, to, to the goodwill account, right? It would it would you know I remember there were several times I had my 2013 P85 Plus. I had a I had a drive unit replaced and a battery pack. So I was you know I I was one of those and multiple door handle uh, door handle fixes. So. I was one of those ones, and you know, really, when when we created the leasing program um, for Tesla on the consumer and the commercial side, it was because Tesla didn't have any presence in, in a lot of states that that 
that were really necessary to have a presence in uh, from a lease perspective. So we went out and, and, and established in those states to assist them um, so that we could help them put more butts in seats. Uh, similar to Xcare, we created it so the community could have something that would uh, allow them to uh, allow the cars to come in uh, on the, into the gray market or the, the or to the uh, the used car market and uh, and and have some type of coverage uh, to where somebody wouldn't feel the need to um, bypass that car and go for something completely different because they didn't want to buy a car out of warranty. So that's that's really the main reason why we created Xcare. And uh, now we're uh, we're finding that a lot of the conversion is coming from new cars especially with Model 3 and Model Y, because for one, there's no ESA available for those, but also people are looking at these cars as no longer, I'm going to drive my car for two, three years and flip iterations to, to new technology, but they're now thinking of, I might keep my car 10 years and drive drive it for 100 plus thousand miles because I know I can, it can go that far. And I'd rather, you know, I'd rather spend a lot less money now uh, to have that coverage, and then ten years from uh, ten years from now, know that that I had coverage all the way through. Or if I decide to make a change, I could leverage the coverage that it has to even make a higher profit on the car when I sell it. So, you know, all of those all those reasons are why we we created Xcare. You know, obviously, I I met uh, Milad through the uh, through the the used car department as well as Brent uh, when they were at Tesla, and um, you know. We bought cars from them. You know, we we uh, financed a lot of their customers, and this we we always talked about the things that internally at Tesla that we we uh, would would have loved to fix. So I think Accelerate uh, gives us the opportunity to go in and and provide support in those areas that um, that we can and that we think are needed. So I'll pass it back over to Brent. Brent can maybe. Uh, touch on, on on anything he wants to touch us uh, and then yeah. give some more information on that. I was definitely going to piggyback on that. Uh, apropos, you know, fixing things, um, Tesla's ESA, by the way, I, I'm not here to slag Tesla's ESA. Their extended service agreement is an awesome product. It's a great warranty. Um, it is slightly overpriced compared to Xcare, but, uh, but it is a, an excellent warranty. That having been said, not everybody fits into their cookie cutter approach uh, and as a big company like they are they have to kind of have a cookie cutter approach so they have a four-year fifty thousand mile or a two-year 25. well we've got clients that uh, that own a tesla that drive thirty thousand miles a year well they're going to burn their factory warranty in in a year and eight months they're going to be way outside of factory warranty because of the higher miles that they drive we have people that drive professionally. They drive for Uber, for Lyft, for, for whoever else, livery services. They drive a ton of miles. Visiting nurses, 30,000 miles a year, 35,000 miles a year is not unusual for physical therapists and occupational therapists that actually go out and, and help people in their homes. So, and, and we have plenty of people like KJ alluded to, they're like, hey, I'm gonna drive the wheels off this thing. Well, you can get an X-Care warranty on your car out to 175,000 miles. So we don't stop at 100K, we don't stop at eight years. We stop at 10 years, but that's 10 years plus where you're at. So you can have a four, five, six-year-old Tesla and get a 10-year warranty going forward, just as long as the miles at the end of the warranty are not over 175,000 miles. So you know, lots of people out in the used market are finding these real light, low miles cars that they just they want to ride the wheels off of and and we're available for that so light use heavy use long term shorter term and like kj touched on as well if you have a an eight-year warranty an eight-year x-care warranty and four or five years in you decide to go another direction you can sell the remaining three years warranty to a private buyer for only a 50 dollars transfer and if you look at the open market at that point a three-year warranty with the miles you have left maybe a thousand dollars more than the refund you have coming back so instead of getting a prorated refund pack it into the car and sell it with the car as a value add so there are just there's so many ways at which x care can be used not only to protect you but to enhance the value of your car so we're here for the community we're in the community if, if you haven't noticed we all drive teslas we're all very deep in the in the culture and we continue to do this as as a labor of love we're a low margin company that just is here to to protect our community 
and we'd, we'd rather we'd rather make money and, and grow our company on helping more and more people in our community than by having higher prices or or excluding a lot of items that, that we wanted to include. So uh, maybe uh, maybe now is a good time to open up some questions and, and then maybe we, uh, after that you can Brent, you can kind of dive into exactly you know what X care covers you know just for those who don't know you know just to kind of give a, a roundabout summary of, of, of what uh, what X care covers. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, let me touch on that real quick and then we'll get into more specific questions. Uh, X care was basically um, uh, it was basically based on the Tesla extended service agreement. So we cover essentially everything on the car except for the battery, the drive motor and user service items. And user service items, I mean like tires, brake pads, fluids, door seals, little minor things that, that really are, are just user servicing. Now, to back up just a moment, the battery and drive motor are not covered under Xcare because they're covered by Tesla under a separate eight-year warranty, but the engineering behind the battery and drive motor is for an effective life of about 15 years or between a half a million and a million miles. So from all the trending that's available out there, we really don't see a lot of battery and drive unit failures as much as we see failures of all the other things on the car, like the MCU, the ECU, the, the motherboards, the daughter boards, the HVAC system, the battery thermal management, the door handles, the uh, just the, the headlights. The headlights are actually modularized unit. You can't replace a bulb in your headlight. The headlight itself is about a thousand twelve hundred dollars and and they usually go in pairs so x care writes a lot of twenty eight hundred dollar checks to replace two headlights because the led strips which are your daytime running lights which are a safety item go brown and we have to replace them because you can't replace out the you know items within the headlights so there's just so many things that we cover and at, at the end of the day, we just we wanted to give the same coverage as Tesla covers in their ESA, but for a lot lower price on average, about a thousand dollars less than Tesla and with only a hundred dollar deductible instead of two hundred dollar deductible. So if you use the warranty three, four, five times, you're three, four, five hundred dollars even further ahead than the thousand dollars you saved off the ESA. Again, not to talk down the ESA so much as to show how we've really enhanced the coverage and made it a lot less expensive to use. Milad, go ahead, I see. You're muted, you're muted, Milad. Can you hear me okay? There you go. Okay, all right. Just one, two. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so one of the things is uh, who services your car does not change at all. Right. Whether you have X care or whether you don't, whether you're completely unprotected, you have, you know, it does, doesn't matter what you have or what coverage you have. You have the ESA, you don't have anything or you have X care. The person who services your car does not change how they service. It doesn't change how they diagnose your car doesn't change what their you know, it's Tesla service, as we all know, for better or for worse, depending on your personal uh, situation. But, um, you know, they're in, in your own stories. But uh, uh, no matter what, Tesla is still the one that is uh, that is repairing your car. They're diagnosing it. We don't have involvement. We don't get in the middle. And this is very. This is a big difference between traditional warranty uh, warranty options versus X care. And, and when I, when I, based on what I was saying earlier, what were some of the things that had like a negative stigma of, of warranty companies? Well, they're the ones that order the parts. So they negotiate, well, you know, where are you getting this part from? We get it cheaper. Well, you know, how about you buy a used part, right? Instead of buying a new one, because it saves us money. Or, well, we need to come, we need to send an inspector out there um, to make sure your car's okay before you can actually activate your warranty. Or two, we don't believe your car actually has this problem. Let's send an inspector out there to actually go diagnose it ourselves and then elongate your entire repair by however long it takes for them to come out there. All of that simply doesn't exist. Plain and simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no catch. That just doesn't, we doesn't have it. We don't have anybody that comes, that comes out. We don't have any sort of involvement as when how Tesla diagnoses your car, what they say is wrong with it, what they need to do, what parts they order from from themselves. Everything is identically the same, nothing changes. That's one of the reasons because we are working with Tesla service, as Elon has said countless times, and he actually just reiterated this uh, last week, uh, which is funny because I say this all the time, he always used to tell us the best service is no service at all, right? The best service is that you never even have to come in at all. 
And as we all know, as we're all Tesla owners, we don't bring our cars in until something breaks, which means the frequency of when we have service is low, but the cost for service is actually pretty high because of that exact same reason. Something breaks, it costs a couple thousand dollars. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all driving $100,000 cars. <laughs> Unless, you know, Model 3s are a little bit ch cheaper. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it is what it is, right? So we are there to kind of mitigate that a little bit. And we really try to make sure that because Tesla is not trying to cheat anybody, <laughs> right? Because all they care about, and coming from the inside, and I know this 100%, the, uh, their ideal scenario is let's get the car out as quickly as possible, <laughs> right? That is the entire purpose. We're not here to make money. It's not there for via profit center. It's there to, which should be experience. And I think they're working on that. And the second one is just getting, getting your car out as quickly as possible. So we run with that understanding. And this is where we work really harmoniously with one another is we create a claims process that works around their entire automated service process. We don't try to get in the middle. We don't step in on your toes. All we simply do is pay on your behalf. So instead of you paying for your credit card, we are. And that's literally the only difference. Outside of that, everything else is identically the same as far as your service, service experience. Of course, if something bad happens with your experience, we will try to make it better. We always try to be the, the problem solvers here. So you know, we'll always try to go out, out of our way, just in case, like for instance, this happens quite frequently. If your car has a breakdown, you have a flat tire, or anything else happens on the road, Tesla can't get out to you, you also have us to fall back on, right? You can go to us first, but if Tesla says four hours and we're like, oh, we can have someone out there in about 45 minutes, that works too. We'll tow, it, tow your car to a, a near nearest Tesla service center. Um, so all of everything, everything as with, with, with regards to service is all identically the same whether you have Xcare or not. Yeah, that's excellent. No, I, I, you know, that a lot of times people, uh, people have bad experiences with extended warranty companies. Like, uh, like for instance, one of the things I got from somebody was that they had had a warranty on a on a Ford that they had had years ago, and uh, they went in to use their warranty, and the warranty company would only pay a certain amount per hour of service, and so they ended up when they filed their claim. That they ended up having to actually pay the difference between the whatever $75 an hour that their warranty was going to pay and the $110 or $120 an hour that Ford was charging. And they actually ended up with a bill for the difference. And as we all know, if you've ever been to Tesla service, it's between $175 and $195 an hour, depending on your region, that they charge for service. Well, I've been through dozens of contracts because people send them to me and I have to pick them apart to basically show them value. And I've seen plenty of contracts that say they pay between $95 and $110, $115 an hour for service. So a lot of folks are just like, well, your price is here and their price is here. And and yeah, basically, because if they're only paying $115 an hour and Tesla's charging $175 an hour, guess who's on the hook for that extra 60 times three, four hours that your car needed service? Well, you are. So at the end of the day, the devil's in the details, and we just wanted to, to set up our company in such a way that we provided max value for our community, right? I tell people all the time, there are two ways to set up an extended service company. The first way is to set it up so you can deny as many claims as possible and make as much money as possible and fill in all your disaffected customers with new people from your television commercials and, and basically just try and keep as many people signing up as possible. And the second way to set up an extended service company like ours is to try and set it up in such a way that you pay as much as you possibly can for as many items as you possibly can to protect and serve your community and make your money off people staying with you. Make your money off people that are coming back to you and sending their friends and their family to you and are comfortable with your service, right? And so end game is that's what we chose to do. We chose to protect our community. Are we the least expensive coverage? No. Are we the most comprehensive coverage and the best coverage and the easiest coverage to use and the most uh, like Tesla's coverage available on the marketplace today? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we have people at our claim center that actually are trained in EVs. So when you call in with an issue, they don't ask you, well, did you might, maybe you got bad gas. When was the last time you fueled your car? I fuel my car in my garage. I put a, well, yeah, but it sounds like you might have an exhaust. I don't have an exhaust. I don't have a catalytic converter. What are you talking about? Could, could you put somebody on the phone that actually knows that I drive a Tesla? Well, what's a Tesla? Okay, forget it. Click, wah, right? When you call in to, to Endurance Dealer Services, our administrator, you call in through a special X-Care line, 
and you get somebody on the other end of the phone that actually has a clue, which is very, very refreshing. You don't have to go around the mulberry bush and explain EVs to these people. They already know. They're already well-versed. They're well-versed in dealing with Tesla. They're well-versed in paying Tesla. And it's just, it's a great experience from front to back. So, yeah, let me uh, let me open things up to questions. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, at least one or two. So, uh, go ahead, shoot. Go ahead, Tim. You had your hand up. We said you first, Tim Whiteside. Hi, Tim. Now I see why you keep calling me Tim. I miss. I'm, I typoed my name. It's Tom. <laughs> oh, <there you laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I've, I've got more than sound issues tonight. Um, well, if you so, prefer Tim, we can call you Tim, but otherwise we'll go with Tom. Thank, thank you. Um, <laughs> So um, anyway, um, I have uh, the 2016 Model S, and I did buy the extended uh, coverage when I bought it. And Tesla has been, we have not needed much help, but they have been terrific, and they typically covered everything, but it was not cheap. And I, can, I, can, I know of four people that have bought uh, Teslas because of my recommendation and having test room in my car, et cetera. And at some point, we're going to transfer the flag. My question is, more of the people that I know are not of the model of driving lots of miles, but of driving a few miles and wanting the car to last a long time. So your, your, sure. your top-end mile limit doesn't scare me at all. It seems completely reasonable. Uh, is there a website or some, a tool you have where we could game what it costs? what you know what the service cost and what the limitations are how how can i best help them take a look at your service i i like that question actually yes and uh for folks like you that are that are what i call light use long termers right you're a buy and hold person you can hold on to your car you get as much out of it as you can uh, and that's why we have the option of a 10-year 75,000 mile warranty right that's only about 7,500 miles a year and a 10, 1075 uh, is also a lot more reasonable. However, what some people will do is they'll buy more coverage than they actually need with a view towards getting out of the car. So instead of getting a 10 year 75,000 mile warranty, they'll get a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty for the difference of a few hundred bucks. But at the time when it comes to sell their car, they can sell a two or three year warranty with 30 or 40,000 miles to move forward with, right? Mm -hmm. And so they they use that as kind of a value add, pack it into the price and then negotiate back to, to basically have a, a car on the marketplace that sells quickly. Um, but yes, in answer to your question, uh, www.accelerateauto.com, that's www.xcelerateauto.com forward slash x dash care, C-A-R-E. What that'll do is that'll bring you to our landing page for Accelerate uh, XCare. And if you scroll down, there's a calculator available there. You can enter in your uh, your email address, your, your car's year, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have to use that for just one thing. And a lot of people think if I put all this information in here, I'm limited to one quote. You can go back in there. You can change the model year. You can change the miles. You can kind of play around with it a little bit to find out where it's most advantageous to purchase. For instance, uh, our pricing is indexed every 10,000 start miles, right? So if you have a car with 18,900 miles on it and you're considering doing something in the next few months, well, it might be more advantageous to do it sooner rather than later because if you go over 20,000 miles, you enter into a new price category. So understanding that our pricing changes at 10,000 mile increments can kind of give you an idea as to when you should pull the trigger. Some people are like, well, I have three months left on my Tesla warranty, so I'm gonna wait until then. Well, if you're near one of those milestones, it's actually better to burn a couple miles of, of warranty that you have remaining to stay in the lower price category. And that's how this kind of calculator tool can really help you because you can you can put in 21,000 miles and you'd be like, oh boy, the warranty goes up 350 bucks. I think I'm gonna jump in now. I've got a few months left, but I wanna jump in at the lower price point. Understanding that a couple of months at the end of you know, a 10 year warranty really is a rounding error, but getting in at a better price. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And also, you know what? Uh, we have what I think Balad kind of alluded to is concurrent coverage too. So we'll say, for instance, that you're buying a brand new Model S or a brand new Model 3 or Model Y or X or whatever, and you want to get coverage on your car 
when you purchase your car. You can actually save on average about a grand buying your coverage at purchase time rather than waiting till the four years and 50,000 mile point. Uh, so if you buy an eight year, 100,000 mile coverage at purchase time or buy a four year, 50,000 miles at the end of your warranty, you actually save about a grand by getting the eight year 100 when you buy the car instead of getting a four year, 50,000 miles at the end of your warranty. The reasoning behind that is pretty simple, of course. You know, our, the money sits for four years and there's there's a certain amount of you know margin there that that works for us. But also you have concurrent coverage during that first four years, as, as Malad touched on. If you get if you're on the side of the road with a flat, you call Tesla roadside and they say it's going to be four hours and you grab your X-Care card out of the glove compartment, call our roadside and we could be there in 45 minutes or an hour and 10. Well, hell's bells. I'm going to go with Xcare because I have that concurrent coverage. Or if you're more than 100 miles from home and you have a breakdown, we have trip interruption for $200 a day for up to five days to cover you if you're outside of your local area when you have a breakdown. So all of those little concurrent coverages you can also use during the during the initial uh, you know Tesla first seat position. So there are a lot of ways in which buying early can save you a lot of money and also add value to the car later on. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, John. I think you're muted, John. There I am. Uh, I just hey. needed to know, uh, I see that you're a Texas company. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, insure uh, vehicles in all 50 states? Yes, yes we do. Uh, we have yet to have an Alaska client. I don't believe we have anyone up in, uh, up in Alaska, but, uh, but yes, we do. Um, every state, uh, roadside assistance, every state has X care available to it. Um, where, where do you reside, John? In Austin. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Love Austin. I think I said that before the call. Yeah, it's great, great city, but yes, we do. Um, we also, here's another neat thing. If you run out of juice and you call Tesla roadside assistance, they will tow you to the next supercharger, right? But they will charge you for that tow. They do not, if you run out of juice, they charge for the tow. Xcare will take you to the nearest charging opportunity and we will not charge you for it. Now, I'm not saying this is a license to be dumb, but I worked for Tesla and I ended up having a, a mile and a half tow to my house at 1230 at night with my whole family in the car because I didn't want to wake anybody up and it's the middle of the night and, and it was downhill all the way to my house. And I thought, I'm going to be Mr. Clever here. I'm just going to cruise into the garage with zero and plug in. Well, a mile and small change from my house and a $279 tow later, I get to send my family home in an Uber, too. So it was over $300. <laughs> stupid, stupid move. But uh, but yes, uh, had I not been under the factory warranty at that time and been under X-Care, I could have simply called X-Care and they would have sent a tow and ate it. So. Uh, again, not, not not listen. I don't care. Three hundred bucks. It was twelve thirty at night, and I was dog tired from a ride home from Iowa City. But uh, but yeah, X Care would have covered that tow. So uh, again, they're just the little nuanced things that uh, that definitely make us a great value. And if any of you are in like, um, uh, or if you know anyone that says like in East Texas, where you're a few hundred miles away from a nearest service center, and you have a breakdown, obviously that can get a little bit troublesome, right? This was always one of our biggest hardships and biggest problems to figure out how to solve from the end of Roadster days all the way to now for Tesla, right? Is um, what do we do, right? I mean, it's it's, diffi it's difficult to serve those customers. Um, there, ha and there have been a lot of solutions like mobile service um, and ra what was previously Ranger service, if, if any of you remember that. Um, and then now it's mobile service. So with us, it's obviously mobile service can only take care of so much. And if there is more of a, I don't want to say, I don't want to be like, use a looming word like catastrophic, but if there's a large failure where you, uh, mobile service won't be able to really tend to it and you need to take it into a service center and you're 400 miles, 300 miles away, um, Tesla would typically charge you, right? And they have a, they have a pricing mechanism to charge you per mile. Um, with us, how our warranty works is we will tow your car to the nearest qualified service center. In, in our minds, the only qualified service centers are Tesla service centers. So it doesn't matter how far away you are. You could be 300 miles away. 
So our warranty is actually really appealing for a lot of uh, a lot of owners that are kind of in the middle of nowhere. And by middle of nowhere, I mean in the Tesla nowhere, which is where there's no <laughs> Tesla service center next to you. Uh, <laughs> so that is that is a, a big perk, and uh, it's something that we can go above and beyond. And it's just another. Um, I wanted to mention this on top of that. We're very agile, right? We we change with the climate of the time. Um, as an example, one that's what. Right. This was actually introduced to us shortly after we released the warranty because uh, we started getting those questions and we made sure to answer yes to that answer uh, to that question. Uh, another one was MCUs. Right. As, as all of us probably know, MCU failures were a pretty big thing, are a pretty big thing. Um, and Tesla didn't want to really acknowledge the whole EMMC issue. And it was leading to a lot of failures for a very, very large uh, priced component. And one of the things that we did was, all right, well, they released an upgrade. Can we just, and we had customers uh, ask, well, can I just pay the difference? You guys cover the change and just, I just pay the difference for the upgrade. Well, we figured out a way to say yes, absolutely. So if you were in an MCU failure, instead of just getting the same MCU, you had a decision, you had a choice to make. Okay, well, you know, pay the extra, I forget how much the cost is now at the top of my head, but it's like a few hundred dollars or something like that, or right around a thousand to go MCU to MCU two. Well, we would cover the MCU one and then you just pay the difference for the upgrade. So that whole entire charge isn't on you. So we do things like this, right? Our ent entire purpose is to one, say yes, but two is to problem solve with what's happening, right? We're all owners, we understand. Um, we're all in the same boat. So, uh, and we all own Xcare, obviously. Um, so, so we all have it on our own cars. And um, so we understand that things happen. This is new technology, new, we're finding out new things. This car is less than, you know, is less than 10 years old. So we're, we're, everyone's finding out new things as time comes by, but we have an incentive to say yes, because we want to keep you in the car. We want you to buy another one. We want you to pass this one down to your family. We want you to tell people about it. The entire mission is that is our, is our focus. I think Michelle, you had a, you had a question. Yeah, we got a hand holder. Uh, yeah, so, um, and you may know the answer to this, and I'm, I'm basically just asking, my car, I've had it for, you know, since 2017 now. Um, what was that original Tesla extended warranty that they were offering when you bought the car? I, I don't even remember how long that went, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be out of it pretty soon. Yeah, the the ESA, um, the ESA is, you, you had two different options of how to purchase it. It only applies to S and X. You have a four-year and 50,000-mile additional warranty after your factory warranty expires, or a two-year and 25,000 after the original expires. Um, the, uh, so the, the maximum you can get warrantied uh, at all for Tesla was eight years and 100, or 100,000 miles. So that was the absolute cap. Um, and there was a price, price, well, depending on when you looked at it, I think they increased price about three times, over, three or four times over its history. Uh, and they haven't changed it since for quite a while now. Um, but you could, you had a, a cheaper option to purchase within the first, I think, 60 or 90 days of delivery. And then anytime after that, you had to buy it with, uh, within a 30 day window of your factory warranty expiring, um, in order to get the warranty. After that, you had to buy the car new from Tesla. Can't be second or third owner. Can't buy it from a dealership. You had to have bought the new car brand new from Tesla in order to be eligible. Um, if you bought it used in any in any circumstance or second or third owner, you you didn't have the ability to purchase. Okay. Thank you. Uh, back to John, looks like. Yeah, I have another question that has to do with uh, the parts you use to do the repairs, and and who would be your authorized uh, service uh, people? We. Uh, Oh yeah, we uh, use Tesla parts, of course, uh, new OEM parts. Uh, we do not allow substitution for aftermarket parts, even though there are precious few of them. Uh, but we insist on new OEM parts. Uh, you can, we we want you to use Tesla service centers, but there are now some independent ASE certified shops that are Tesla trained with access to Tesla parts that we will allow. There's a place called Electric Garage or Electrify Garage. Uh, I think there's one in Massachusetts, one in Florida. There's also uh, a couple in SoCal now that are coming online that are prior Tesla uh, service uh, people with access to Tesla parts and Tesla train. So there's a lot of a lot of folks out there that are very competent to work on your Tesla. But uh, first, first line is always, hey, if you're anywhere near Tesla, we, we'd far and away rather that they work on your car. 
Um, Milad touched on the fact that Ranger service is available. Yes, and we do work with Ranger service as well or the remote service. And by the way, there's a nice, cute little story. They actually called it Ranger service because they used to be Ford Rangers that came out with tool toolboxes on the back yep. of them that actually fixed the cars. So Ranger kind of stuck for some of us old heads. But uh, but yeah, so we, we we definitely don't want any used parts or remand parts. The only exception to that will be that if Tesla stops supporting a certain part after seven years is, is federal law to support parts on a on a mass market car in the United States. So after seven years, they could stop supporting it technically. And if that ever became the case, but remanufactured part was available that was, you know, that was sufficient to fix the car, of course, we, we would have no alternative. But uh, but yeah, first line is always OEM parts and straight through Tesla. Yeah. The only difference being is that you call us first and just let us know if, before you make your service appointment. Hey, I've got a light on that says charger fault, inverter fault, battery thermal management fault, whatever. Let us know. We set up a claim and then you just make your service appointment as normal. And uh, when you turn in the car, you just basically tell them that you're using X care to pay the bill. And when they're done with it, send us the send us the bill and we pay it. So yeah. simple. And if you're going to Tesla service there, we don't order parts for them. They're, they're doing everything they're in their own wheelhouse, just oh, like sure. any. Yeah. So <laughs> they're ordering from themselves, from the factory, from Fremont. Right. Um, we don't have any determination of that. That's entirely up to Tesla. Yeah. And, and frankly, they make the parts so they know what they're doing. Right. Buy, <laughs> buy some garbage parts from somewhere else. Did you have another question, Michelle? I'm sorry. What was that, Michael? Did you have another question? I see your hand is still up. Oh, no. Did I? Okay. No problem. I guess I have a question quick. Um. So you mentioned you can go to 175,000 miles. So for instance, if somebody has the factory warranty up to 50,000, they buy a, a, a four year 50,000 mile from you guys, that puts it at 100,000. At the end of that, could they, could they buy another one or is it like a one-time thing or can you, go, you know, kind of- You can, you can keep re general? warranty as much as you want. Now the, the issue becomes cost, right? It's always more prudent to buy a longer warranty and then get a prorated refund of anything you don't use or use it as a selling feature to sell your car. Um, so, so you're not limited to a four year 50K from us yet. At the 50,000 mile point, if you wanna get a, a five year 125,000 mile warranty or at the 20,000 mile point, if you wanna get a, you know, a six year 125,000 mile warranty, we, we've got all kinds of flexibility built into it. So uh, yeah, it's always more prudent to buy a little bit more than you think because time goes by really quick, <laughs> you know, and suddenly you're like, oh, I'm at the end of my warranty and I, I wasn't really planning on that enough. So I usually tell folks buy a little bit further in than you think you're gonna use and then have something to sell forward with the car or get a prorated refund for any part that you don't use. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I, you know, I, I've been in automotive sales for so many years and training and everything. And 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 one of the things that that has always kind of stuck in my mind from that experience is having a view towards the end of my ownership experience with the car, not towards right now, right? And so if you kind of plan on the end and plan on having something, you know, to use to sell forward with the car, it's very, very smart. And if you look at our warranties, say you buy an eight-year warranty, eight-year 100K, and you use six of it. So you've got two years and maybe 30,000 miles to sell. Well, if you go on our website and you see a two year 30,000 mile warranty for your car is $2,700. Well, your prorated refund is 1,500, we'll say at the end of you know you know, the unused portion, sell it forward with the car and actually make money over your prorated refund. We don't care what you sell the warranty forward for, it's just a $50 transfer fee. So if you want to include it in the sale of your car, Make yourself a little money on the warranty. Why not? It's yours. That warranty belongs to you. So why shouldn't you be able to use it as leverage to sell your car? Yeah, I tell a lot of our members, might as well just, you know, ping us. Get us, uh, let, let us at least give you a cancellation quote. And can you beat that by selling it with the warranty? If so, then why cancel, right? I mean, yes. it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Might as well just make someone else happy and keep them in the car for longer. And, you know, I mean, um, once again, it's all cyclical. <laughs> the whole purpose is to make sure that this waterfall of vehicles is always stays in someone's hands as much as it possibly can for the sake of all of our cars <laughs> and all of our values. Do <laughs> you have any questions? 
Go ahead, KJ. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, well, I was just also wanted to point out that on on the coverage side, uh, you know, if, if 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 you have something that's fairly massive, like, like for example, we had a Model S with a, a full panel roof replacement, uh, eight grand worth of panel roof replacement. If you have something massive like that. Uh, that far outweighs the cost of X care. It doesn't mean that your you, your coverage is gone and it expires. So, like in that, you can you can leverage X care for virtually anything that happens with under under your coverage time and um, and mileage. So, if you have something that is somewhat major like that, you know you you can you can still file additional claims. Um, you know, if something else goes wrong, you know, and, and it, it it doesn't cap out at what your at what the cost of your coverage was. Matter of fact, I'm glad you touched on that, KJ, because uh, I was looking over a contract a little while ago from uh, from CarShield, who is also uh, getting in the space, and their coverage limits you to one screen replacement, one one computer replacement. Right. And there are several computers in the car, one of which is the MCU, the egg. <laughs> one is the MCU, which is facing you, but the other is the ECU, which is another kind of bus controller behind that. And there are several other com control computers on board this car that 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 are very intimately involved in keeping the car running. And, uh, you know, one one MCU replacement, one screen replacement, one display in front of the you know, if you have an S or an X where you have the front display in front of the steering wheel as well. That's all she wrote. And if you have a 10-year warranty, and, and we've all seen MCUs go in four or five years, you know, or, or even sooner sometimes, that one replacement, that's it. You know, and that we if, if we have to replace the MCU, you know, four times in 10 years, that, that's just, that's on us. And, you know, that's why we're more of a membership organization than we are an extended warranty company. We want to make sure that everybody pays in and then the corner cases are paid out and everybody gets value and everybody gets peace of mind. And at the end of the day, that's that's the way the world should work, right? Yeah, and and on the corner cases like the like what you were talking about with the uh the headlight assembly, like you know, we've we've uh, we, I think we've we've all been in owner owners groups for a, a while, I would imagine. Uh, and we've seen people that have had some of those eyelids go out. You know, the if you if you're looking in comparison, and these are the kind of the attention to detail that we put into X Care, if you're if you're looking at, at what other coverages uh, are, they they mainly say that you know this that's a cosmetic type of concern. It's not functional. Um, you know, your your if it was your main LEDs or HEDs, then then those are functional. But from eyelids, those are cosmetic. Um, and so they would normally deny that claim. Uh, we know that, you know, even though those eye, those eyelids are, are are for the most part, you know, a, a cosmetic concern, that it, that's not what our coverage is is uh, is based on. It, our coverage is based on what is the fix. And if the fix is a covered component, then that fix is uh, is is the headlight assembly. So. If an eyelash goes, uh, eyelash portion of the eye, eyelid goes out, that in that fixes an entire new headlight assembly for a thousand dollars. Then that's what we're looking at as the fix. And so I, I think that's an important differentiator between you know how we approach things and how um, and and how others approach. So yeah, I want, on that I want I want to talk about a story that we just had just the last, last couple of days. Um, and we get stories like this all the time because we are the arbiters of what happens, right? I mean, we're, if any, any sort of escalation happens, it's, uh, the decision is coming from our end. So we had a situation where um, Tesla screwed up. Tesla completely messed up. They actually, uh, they, um, they ordered a part and installed it, and it was a wrong one. Uh, I, we've, this, ne this never happened before, I, I, at least in our, we've never seen this before. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how many times it actually happens in reality, but uh, uh, very strange, right? So they ordered the wrong part from their own system, from their own factory, which is mind-boggling on its own. But um, they ordered the wrong part and installed the uh, style incorrectly. So the owner did obviously didn't know about this until Tesla told them about like a week later. We paid for the first one, 
right? Uh, paid for the repair on the first one um, as we normally would. And, and, and then the second time around, it was Tesla's mistake, right? And so they had to order another part, the correct one. Um, so, th so the customer uh, was being billed for the Delta, right? Uh, and Tesla was going to cover the repairs for uh, obviously their own mistake because um, there's more labor that's involved to correct themselves. Um, but I was, I was approached with, well, what do we do, right? It's this, technically the same repair. It's just like this weird situation that's happened. Like, do we cover it? Uh, and honestly, the first, res first, thing, first response um, that came from me was, uh, well, if we don't, the customer's on the, on the hook. So why wouldn't we? And everyone, you know, and there's no more discussion. Discussion was over. That's what we put ourselves in, right? We put ourselves in your shoes. We put ourselves in the owner's shoes. Why wouldn't we? Because what's the alternative? The customer gets screwed? Because that doesn't make any sense. So why wouldn't we cover this? So of course we did. Because that was the only avenue. That was the only logical avenue from our minds. Now, if we were a normal insurer, we would view that, that Tesla's mess up as an opportunity to deny a claim and to save money on our end. But that doesn't make sense for us. That's not what we're trying to do here. But on the, and also on the flip side to that and it is, you know, Tesla is unlike any other OEM when it comes to service. I mean, so there, there's been instances where uh, we've had invoices for several thousand dollars and then Tesla, uh, Tesla technician figures out that that some of the fixes weren't necessary and that they were able to troubleshoot rather than order parts and they've uh, refunded us uh, or reduced the cost of the ticket, which we, where have you ever seen or heard that on a service drive? So, I mean, there's there's a certain level of this that allows us, you know, to be able to do the things that Malad was just talking about is because there is a, you know, there is a, an overall knowledge of, of the, the greater good when it comes to service that we, I think everybody wants to, um, Everybody wants to put their best foot forward. So, I just put my uh, personal email at Accelerate Auto on the chat, as well as our website uh, calculator, acceleratorauto.com forward slash x dash care. Uh, remember to scroll down to the calculator for that. So, if you want to play around with it, put in uh, whatever data you want, kind of uh, kind of shop around for rates, figure out what is a prudent time to move forward. Let us know. Um, also, if you send me anything, uh, thank you very uh, much, Jana, for the for the very kind comment as well. Um, if you uh, if you want to send me an email, I will gladly get your quote uh, for for any situation that you have going on, uh, or if you're going to be buying a car in the future or whatever, let me know as well. Um, perfectly happy to to figure it out. Uh, never an ounce of hassle or pushiness from any of us. Uh, we're here for you. You are not here for us. So when uh, whenever you have uh, anything that you'd like us to uh, to address or figure out or get your quote, let us know. Okay. Terrific. Well, if there are no further questions, uh, Michael, I, uh, I yield the floor and it was a pleasure once again. Uh, once again, Michael, thank you very much for setting this up. Appreciate it uh, to all of the folks that ask questions and all the folks that have come out today uh, for this. Uh, very much appreciate your interest and uh, yeah, just keep uh, keep the uh, keep the evangelism going. Uh, for Tesla and for EVs, um, and uh, and uh, definitely uh, refer us. We would very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time, y'all. All right, thank you, Brent, Malad, and KJ for being here for us. And thanks everybody for showing up tonight. Uh, this is it being recorded, so I'll get it put out to you guys through the Facebook groups as well, so you can watch it again if you want, or share it with people who were not able to make it tonight. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. I do appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks.